it back up. Turn disk low. Have you these here? UV Master. No UVs on this one. I merged low here. You plug in. Doesn't have UVs either. Hollow. Merge. Merge visible with UVs. This one. Z plug in. UVs did not come. This one doesn't have UVs. Did I lose all my UVs? Once again. Here's what we're going to do. Okay. How about now? No UVs. I am blown away by this. I'm going to delete all, send it back over from Zmesh one more time, or from Maya one more time. Go Z. As you ease. I am not sure. Oh, sorry. It does have EVs and it's working as expected. So, I made a mistake. Probably just change like some changes, no. Because that's actually a learning thing I didn't know. Um, just because it doesn't show up in your flatten, it doesn't mean it doesn't have UVs. The whether it has or not it has UVs will be told to you down here in the UV map section of your sub tool. Sure enough it has UVs and it has texture. It's actually doing exactly what I want it to do. Um, that one has UVs, no texture. I wonder if. So I have my subdivision. Okay. Okay, so let's divide all those. Doing this all in one shot really is the goal here though, so why don't we... Emerge low. Does not have UVs. Let's delete this sub-tool. This merge low here. Take them all down to low subdivision. Mergers will keep UVs. It's this jammer. Looks like it has UVs. Double check. New texture. New from poly paint. All right, that did the trick. As you can see it put everything from the poly paint where I want. It still has the little artifacts right there. We can clean that up later. Um, but that's good. That's what I want. So, if now I take this as one mesh, backs to here, a pen, base three, that's the new one. That is disc low. This one can kick rocks. It's our new disc low, which has texture already. But I think what I'd like to do is go all high put everything on high and then see if I can't project the texture from all these other ones. Let's save the project and just project it right here on my low. So what this should do is grab those high resolution details and hopefully grab 
crab. The proper. It's not going to clean that edge up, so why don't we divide a little bit? Increase, increase my normals, increase polygroups. Let's try that. Oh, you know what? Do I have the texture enabled? It might have actually worked. It did work. I'm an idiot. It did work. It cleaned those edges up for me. I just had the texture on, so I was projecting to nothing. Unbelievable. Turn the texture off. Got that there. I've got all the high resolution detail. These are all at high. Let's try that projection. Let's see if that works there. Caused more problems than it solved. Let's see if this handles it. This is probably the slowest. This is probably the slowest fast pipeline. <laughs> this is the, probably the slowest quick prop I've ever made. So <laughs> sorry, guys. The projection worked, but now I am not. There we go. Now we're in business. This is one unified mesh with UVs and a projection with some poly paint, new from poly paint, texture is on, we have a nice clean mesh at long last with some texture detail and some spill over there to be expected when you project but now I can export this bad mirror jammer, FBX export and I think this will bring the textures with it so what that'll do then is enable me to go in here let's go to my source art folder for the game I can source meshes we'll call this beta disk Disk beta actually that makes more sense. So there it out goes that, and I believe the textures will go with it. Still working. Don't use flattening if you have creases; it will erase the creases. Is that true? I did not know that. Thanks for that heads up. I can source. Maps, jammers. Meshes. Uh, exporting visible. I'm exporting all the high res details. Son of a bitch. Move too fast and you blow it. That's the that's the lesson here. Um, about ten million. This shouldn't take too long, actually. Yeah, radial symmetry is huge. It's um, I'm making frisbees basically here, so it's really kind of a big thing. So I accidentally exported all of my geo. That was a mistake. Z plugin export visible. Normals, PNG, 16-bit, only this one, export, export, disk, beta, and replace. So 
As you can see, ZBrush based a nice little color map for me. And I also got my Geo there, so I can go and give this a spin. It's a 2K texture, which is probably too big. T, disk, beta, base color. So now I'm going to take the textures and the Geo and throw them up in our engine. And in a matter of <laughs> a lot longer than I anticipated that taking, but you know, doing a couple things for the first time, and um, of course, you know, can always come back. And because so much of that process was procedural, um, I can now iterate on that mesh. And you know, you might say, hey, we'll just do it good the first time. And that's true, like that you want to do your while you're sitting there in the package, do your low poly as good as you can, do your high poly as good as you can, get to as close to finish as you can when you know what the finish line is. Um, when you don't know what the finish line is, it often helps to just put in things that are rough block outs and then auto generate UVs, auto generate your creases, and and then, you know, build from there. And then you'll start seeing things like, oh you know what, this doesn't work, this does work, this would be a lot cooler if it was this way, so on and so forth. So um, here we are. I will try to do this quickly so we can just see the mesh in game real fast. I'll take this off your screen here so it's not as fun to look at. So let's go to Jammer's Discs Mesh. Import source art. Maps, jammers, meshes. So what I'm doing here is just fishing out the beta disk I just made, throwing it in the engine. And now as you can see needs to be scaled up. Usually I would do all this from ZBrush, but for the purposes of showing it here, I believe it's at 1 100th. Might be actually 1 10th. <laughs> yeah, that's too big of a disk. Um, I was working at one tenth, I forgot. So let's re import that again. That seems about right. And that's obviously the back end of it. Let's see if the future disk. There's our default disk. Here's our beta disk. Looks like the scales are correct. They are. Okay. So now. I can take the texture that I got from ZBrush as well. Display the base color. Slap that into the engine. Give myself a new material. No roughness metallic and AO, and then I'm going to take the disk beta color, take that mesh, slap it onto here, and there, there's our disk. As you can see, it's, um, oh, I projected those lights wrong on the edges there. So, like, what this is, like, going to be is this. You know, rocky material in the middle, and I can take jump back into ZBrush, and um, you know, actually do some high poly details and, and drop out a normal map as well. 
but you know the purposes of just blocking this out you know if I wasn't streaming and blowing them and, and botching so many parts of my workflow that actually goes pretty fast I mean that, that's a matter of tens dozens of minutes versus hours um, I know just going through this whole talk took me about an hour to, to get that all to this place but um, you know typically that goes in a matter of dozens of minutes and it's just like in there ready to rock um, part of that is that I don't typically texture in ZBrush I was trying to make sure I could stay in the application for as long as I could um, so now that we have that there let me go to the game. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just bringing up some stuff here. Whoops, that's all. I don't want on the broadcast. Um, yeah. So you know, another thing you can do here while I'm waiting for that to load is, um, since I have high resolution detail on this mesh, you can come down here to your normal maps. There's actually quite a good baker um, here in ZBrush as well. I don't typically use it that much, but you know, um, smooth normals, and then I think it's switch RNG. There's one thing that, that they disagree on. It might be, it's either flip G, which is the Y channel, or switch RNG, um, because this is Z up and, and Unreal is, or this is Y up and Unreal is Z up, but you can build a normal map right here, maybe the lower subdivision level, and that's a pretty nice little normal map right there, and I can use that in engine, and I'll actually try, I'll plug that in here in a second, see if we can get going with that. Um, The poly count right now is oh, sorry, let me find it. Poly count is forty five hundred tries, which is oh that's the other one. Twelve hundred tries, which is a lot more than I would expect for this disc. Um, you know, I didn't spend any time optimizing that. I would what I would do is come back and clean out a lot of the unnecessary geo. Um, the beta B has about 2,000. I don't think that's necessary at all. I didn't. I didn't much clean up the edges around the center plate at all. And so you know, there's a lot of cleanup to be done for sure. Um, so let me bring this over here. Let's see if I can't make the default disk beta. There we go. So I've just added it to the game. Which I will now launch. And while that's launching, I might as well just export this. That puts it as a texture. As a texture, I can export it. As PNG. Okay. Uh, that's exported now. Let's see, I take this down a little bit to a more reasonable view. Let's go to 720. There it is. Um, obviously, it's uh, you know got a lot of work to do. It's uh, at, I think full zero roughness, which means it's just a big plasticky mess. But anyway, for the uh, um, it's not bad actually for uh, just establishing the range. Um, For those of you familiar with Disjam, you're seeing some of our new lobby stuff, which is shown here for the first time.
So there it is. So like there's our disc in game. And one thing I'm realizing already is the color white isn't a great color for our court. Um, you know, like its whole color palette probably needs to be changed. I think maybe when I go to the marble look, um, I can put a lot more gray in there. And then if I slow it down, you can kind of see like those areas I want the lights will probably work pre pretty well. Um, yeah, so like obviously I need to flip it over as well too because the bees on the wrong side. Um, but yeah, you know, as far as like being a game ready asset, it's so far, I mean like even with how ridiculous it looks up close, it looks decent from this angle because it's really just about color reads. So if I were going to make some changes to it now, things I would change would be um, I'd make the gold a darker, grittier gold. I'd make the lights pretty emissive, so there's like a nice glowy blue halo there. And then um, I would make the marble a lot more kind of gray, but also I'd put the, the marble grain, which is tends to be a darker kind of dark gray and black. I would make that a lot more prominent um, so it would read a little bit better. So that's kind of what the disc would look like, um, you know, and you know, from scratch to that in about an hour is not bad. It's not great because I'm not wild about how long it took for me to get through some of the little hiccups I had there, but what's happening here? Oh, here's why. I'm exporting my normal map right now. Um, let's throw the normal on there. Let's see how the normal works out. Uh, disc beta normal. So I just exported the normal map from ZBrush. I'm going to give that a spin here and see if we can't um, do something with that. Textures. Jammers. Textures. throw a little normal map on there it might help a lot So it looks like the normal map actually, yeah, it needs to be flipped and adjusted. And um, yeah, I won't, I won't spend time debugging all that here with you guys today. I don't think there's a lot of value in that. Um, but yeah, so anyway, like from nothing to in-game in about an hour, uh, usually about you know maybe a half hour or less without the hiccups. And the best thing is that like now that I'm in there and Oh, I hate the proportions. I hate this. I hate that. I don't like how these things, you know, reach to that place. That's a good call. Why don't we flip that B while we're here? Backwards part of it should allow me to now Z plugin. It's actually a good point because then we can do like the iterative part of this. So like, I've just made that one change, right? Um, it looks like I want to probably flip these as well. Um, let's mirror these in Z. That way those connectors are in the right place. 
looks like their normals got flipped. So I can go down here to display properties. Flip the normals. Oh shit, oops. That's so strange. Try this one more time. I don't really use multi-map apps order, no. I'm actually not familiar with it. Um, if there are some pointers on it, you know, be sure to share. What is happening here? I only have this visible. Oh, maybe because I have this normal map on. And it was like... Texture off. Let's turn this thing off. Okay. Radial symmetry's on. That wouldn't matter. Are there two of these or something? That's so strange. Yeah, I think... Uh, is it flip green or is it exchange R and G. It's probably flip G. I'm going to give that a shot. Draw a little transpose line. Rotate it manually. That's lame too, though. idea why the flipping is also flipping my normals. I've never seen that before. It's so bizarre. Yes. 
That's so strange. I'm not sure what was happening there, but regardless, I got there. We have it flipped. So now, um, just the geo is flipped. The UV should be maintained. I will do another export of this guy as is. Export visible. Make sure the other visibilities are all off. And while I'm here as well, why don't I just group by normals, turn off texture. Oh, you know, because I'm not going to be able to. I don't think I'm going to be able to project that without doing a full. Oh, yeah, let's not do that. Let's just try that for now. Because typically these would be baked down as it is anyway. And also, let's hop over here, reimport. How'd that do? Looks backwards here. That might be a good thing for game. Let's give it a spin. rotated <laughs> but I think it'll work see you later robo wheels thanks for stopping by Try one more export here, see if we can get it. Oh, perhaps I didn't export it properly. This beta. That might have done her. Looks like it did. So yeah, so, um, in the future, I think I'll probably focus uh, more on sculpting. That's probably what you guys came here to see. Um, you know, the the particulars of my sort of kind of low poly to high poly workflow is what I wanted to share here today. Um, and we got through a lot of that. Obviously, I um, had some hiccups with uh, getting the disc um, textured and baked down, but that's just a, honestly, you know, those tools become second nature once you do them a lot. Um, I don't typically do a lot of my baking in ZBrush. I just export my high-end res and texture it externally. Um, but you know, to ZBrush's credit, as you can tell, like we were able to get through that, and I was able to get these maps out there and. You know, let's see if I can uh, verify these changes were made correctly. Get a bot going. 
and I'm running up right on three hours here, so uh, maybe I'll increase my stream next time and we'll do more sculpting and we'll take things to finished and polished and we'll start with a more kind of solid concept instead of just uh, improvising. There's the solid B there. So yeah, you know, did a quick flip of the uh, of the thing there so I can get a little bit bigger. Um, I can't. But yeah, so like, you know, once we hit the finished version of this disc, um, you know, we can come back to this stream, we can show you guys like, you know, the, the where it kind of came from and where we ended up. But yeah, I guess I'll probably wrap it with that. Um, uh, yeah, that is the iterative part. So, you know, typically what happens is that part goes a lot faster, about 10 to 20 minutes. And then um, I also have my texture pipeline set up, so changes in ZBrush, once I export them, it's two button clicks over in Painter and the nor normals and the materials and all the dirt and grunge maps all update immediately right away as, right away as well. And then changes in here then become uh, more rapid over there in, um, in Engine. And then it's like, oh, hey, I hate this. Uh, oh, these lights on the side are too small. Um, the grips are too big. And I come back into ZBrush. You know, I'll do a um, polygroup all. Shrink all these down, and you know, start doing stuff like that. Now it's a little bit more of a thin disc, and obviously I caught some of that and I didn't mean to. But yeah, so like that's that's kind of what I mean. Like, just starting here, you know, showing you guys like the the sort of steps I take in the pipeline, and then hopefully in my future streams um, it goes a little bit more smoothly, and we're just liggity spliggity into the engine, or just spending you know more time in ZBrush doing actual sculpting, and because I I can noodle these things. I love playing with cube measure and doing a lot of these things um, here in in zero. Like so, like, when we do the upcoming props that I want to do, um, you know, we have stuff like this, where this is all done in Z measure. Um, you know, oops. So this thing, let me just turn off the material here. Actually, that's that's fine. So like, this is like a joystick sort of disc. And this whole thing is gonna be, you know, like already got its like it's already got its like subdivision set up. It's already got its hard edge set up. And this is obviously more than a matter of like one. This is probably like an hour or two. But an hour or two for something that's like I think pretty polished. And you know we can get into the place where you know like it's got the bevels on it that I want. Like that creasing is exactly how I want it to crease. Not too much, not too little. Um, buttons are all creased up. You know, everything's kind of set up the way I want it to. And I can just alt tap around the mesh, do the things as I want to do there. And like, there's like a pretty nice high, high resolution mesh right there. And, um, you know, with something like this, let's see if I have my renders of this. Yes, yeah, so that, like, that right there projects to that. I think that's pretty, like, that right there was all done in Q, in, in, in the uh, Z modeler tools only. So, that's the kind of stuff we're going to be building here. Um, like to have gotten to this co uh, quality of stuff, but I did spend too much time, you know, demonstrating the uh, the method there. But now that we kind of had the method digested, um, you know, we can do a little bit more with this next time around. And we'll get to, to more stuff like this. And, uh, you know, and we'll, we'll finish this. I'm going to make this actually a proper finished mesh. I want to do uh, something more interesting with this one. Um, just once it has, um, you know, now that I've got the kind of basics figured out, I'll probably do some more interesting stuff with this center plate and I'll make the B uh, a little bit more impactful and weighty. So it kind of like is the star of the show there in the middle. And then, uh, yeah, and then like, you know, I'll probably do the texturing on my own externally and then we'll get that into game and we'll, we'll play around with that a little bit but uh that's gonna be it for me um thanks for hanging out for the extra hour guys sorry for going over but um thanks for working with all that stuff with me and making sure we got together into things if you want to see anything else um my where i'm gonna be my stream is gonna be different from the other presenters um the other guys are are far superior sculptors to me and my stuff's mostly going to be about just getting sort of low resolution. Somewhere between our game assets are somewhere between mobile and next gen AAA, like super detailed. Like the the stream this morning you saw, 
um, he was building a really, really cool high res resolution piece of detail. That detail is all going to be lost on our game. We don't have that much detail uh, rendered that because our cameras are so far away. So um, we don't typically build that stuff that far out. So my stream is going to be more about like how fast can I keep it, how good a result can I get by keeping it fast. And um, in our future streams, there'll be less introductory stuff and more just like work, work, work. So hopefully you guys are into it. If you'd like to see anything else, um, you can let Pixelogic know. They'll let me know. Or just let me know. My social media stuff's all there. Um, all my stuff for our game channel is there. And if you want to play Disc Jam, it's a free beta right now. So you can go to discjamgame.com, get the free beta, and uh, try it out. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, until next time.